The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to start the show uh, today to review where we are uh, in the market. Uh, we bottomed on the 15th. As you remember, last Friday, we had a pretty good rally of 300 and some Dow points and 50 handles in the S&P. And then it, of course, sold off even more. The first chart that I posted in here is a New York Stock Exchange Index, folks. And we are making a very, very large ABCD pattern on the daily pattern in the New York Stock Exchange Index. The, the timing of it is going to be a little tricky because we have some cycles that uh, run from uh, today all the way into a week from today. So there's a whole bunch of these transits that could uh, pull the market even lower. We could bottom at any time. Now, if you're a pattern recognition trader, I know it's hard to do this, but this is where you got to cover your short and then uh, look to, uh, you know, move the uh, move, put them back on after a rally of about, we should get a rally of at least two weeks. I'm looking at mid-February uh, as a potential rally. But this market, folks, is so bearish that uh, it is, uh, I mean, it is yelling and screaming bearish. I mean, I, my goodness, I mean, look at the long-range bars down. Look look at the history. We've broken worse than we've ever broken in January. I mean, that that should be a, a tremendous, scary uh, spot to you folks. Uh, so just keep in mind that this thing does look bearish on a, on a very long term. Now, we've broken below. The uh, 786 retracement in the NASDAQ uh, today, uh, overnight, uh, we hit that exactly on the 15th, and we rallied uh, a little bit on Monday and then a little bit on Tuesday, of course, then we gave all of it back, and then we went lower uh, today, which tells us that, uh, you know, that didn't hold that number, which means it is hasn't made the bottom yet. Now, the Dow Jones has done exactly the same thing that the, um, the NASDAQ has done. The S&P, of course, went down. And we took out the the low in the S and P, but just take just take a look at this S and P, folks. One of the things that we that we talk about here uh, at uh, TFNN is the fact how the market moves in um, in rhythm. And I'm going to put a couple of charts up here just to show you you know what's actually happened here. I, I know you know this, but we'll do it again to take a look. But you'll see here it was you know on Friday we made the perfect A B C D move, and as you can see we had an equal rally back on January. January the 13th, that was roughly 50 handles. We had one on January 14th. Uh, that one was just about 50 handles. And then what happened yesterday? We did exactly the same thing. And I'll put that up here in just a second if I can find it. Uh, here it is, and we'll be able to see it. And today we came down and we hit uh, right at that uh, longer term 1.27 down there at 18. 1832. The market's been 1830. But look at those rallies since the 11th of January. We had a, a 50 handle rally on the 13th. We had a 50 handle rally on the 14th. We had a 50 handle rally on the 19th. All of them going down and making new lows. So remember, the markets repeat themselves over and over again. And that's the, the main thing that you want to uh, be watching. Now, the, the market on an overall basis, uh, like I I was mentioning is is just uh, is very very bearish. But I wanted to just get uh, just to show you the, um, the the crude oil. Excuse me, the Nasdaq because we've made a uh, when we broke below that 786 retracement in the Nasdaq, we came and we've come down and we've uh, you know made a little bit of a three drive pattern here in the Nasdaq, much like we did before. But that just means we're going to have a rally. This thing is just really uh, really really in bad shape. That's uh, the main thing. I mean, if you look at some of these things, uh, they're just really uh, tremendously bearish. Now we do have we're going to have a special guest on here. In
in about 10 minutes, we're going to have uh, Bill Meridian from Cycles Research <clears throat> in Vienna, Austria. And Bill's got some really good things to talk about. And as you recall, you know, he worked in Saudi Arabia in Abu Dhabi for uh, 12 years, trading for one of the larger trading groups in the world. And now he works out of Vienna, Austria. But uh, we're going to take a look here at the transit chart that uh, Shane Smolian furnished us last week. And as you can see, uh, we did top on the 13th and we did top on the, the, the 18th. And then we're coming down now into the 23rd where we have some negativity. And then we have a little bit of a rally into February, uh, all the way into February 11th. That's the one that I think is going to be your get out of jail free card if you have some stocks. And you'll see uh, the oil market. Someone has a question about the oil. Uh, I've been watching oil very, very carefully. Now, today on the shorter term chart on oil, which I, I look at uh, when we're when we're moving, you know, down as much as we've been moving down, I like to go into a smaller time frame. We made a very nice um, three drive to a uh, bottom pattern at a 1.618 retracement level. Uh, the, the trouble is it's a very short term chart. It's only an hourly chart, but so far it has held that level. And uh, to me that I think that is important, but you know, it's still real early uh, in the trading game. Now, another one that is uh, very interesting here, and it looks like it's going to be lower again today. Uh, and you have to watch this one closely too, because this has been the leader of the pack on the downside. And that is the, um, the uh, 1.618 expansion. Can you believe this, folks? We're at a 1.618 expansion of the October 2014 low. Can you imagine where we would be in the Dow? We would be trading in the Dow, believe it or not, at around 12,500. That's the bottom line. And here we are in the transportations here at the level of, um, you know, 60, 60, uh, 6,600. So uh, we closed the other day at 6,689. We're most probably going to be lower today because the Dow being down, you know, several hundred points uh, early this morning, but we'll wait and see. The the patterns are the the patterns are telling you that the the this this part of the bear market is pretty much over. That's what uh, that's what it looks like, and um, you know we'll see if uh, that's going to be if that's going to be the case or not. But that's what it looks like. And uh, well, over long term, boy, this thing. Uh, if you want to see a real bearish chart, folks, let me show you one right here. And uh, th this is of course it's the Hang Seng, but uh, now I got to do is find the doggone thing. I, I did so many. Of here we are. It's right up here. Okay. Oh, I had some other things, but I'll have to cover those tomorrow because we're going to have Bill on here in a little bit, and he's got some really great information, so I want to give the, the mic over to him so that he can handle everything. But look at this uh, long-term weekly chart in the Hang Seng. Uh, we rallied exactly to a 382 retracement in the BC swing, and look what happened is we come down and we make a double bottom at point B, and then the following, that was closed on a Friday, and then Monday you open down. Uh, two weeks ago, and bada bing, bada boom, you know, you're down another thousand points. And the target for this is another 20% lower uh, in the uh, Hang Seng. And believe me, folks, this is, uh, you know, <laughs> when we broke that key, key support at 20,000, that's not a good sign. And now we're 1,200 points uh, below it. And that's a beautiful ABCD pattern. And as you know, ABCD patterns don't work all the time. But, you know, when they're set up like this, it looks pretty good. So we'll see. Take a little break to pay a few bills and we'll be right back. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed 
Lift has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. And we've got uh, Bill Meridian from Cycles Research in Vienna, Austria on the line. Bill, are you there? Hi, Larry. How are you? Listen, I have a, a personal question. Uh, what's your view sure. uh, on the crude oil, my friend? Well, I had uh, turned bullish on it a month ago, and I have to give up that position right now. So uh, at the moment, I'm having to switch to bearish just because um, I think we can't be too far from a low because everyone that I talk to in the oil states are all cutting expenses. Mm -hmm. And the last time they did that was ninety nine two thousand. Oh, that's when it was eleven dollars a barrel. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, yeah. When it was uh, ten or eleven, in fact, I was in Abu Dhabi. Felix Zulov came down to visit from Switzerland, and I he he and I both thought gold and oil were at a low. And I said, well, that's interesting because internally here they're cutting expenses left and right. And when you get people like that cutting expenses. You know, I could tell you the story about 1990 when I went to visit my friend's jewelry shop, and he he says, "Oh, good customer, please, please wait, Bill." And he uh, in 45 minutes, this guy bought his two wives three million dollars worth of jewelry. So when you get people like that cutting expenses, you know you must be close to a low. Yeah, probably so. Okay, I'm going to let you take over the show now. Yeah. I've got your first chart put up. Uh, if a question comes in, I'll interrupt and let you know, and then we have a commercial. But uh, you've got such good information. Just fire away. We're going to start out with the uh, election uh, cycle that you have put up here, and then well, we'll go me, from there. Yeah, let me just begin by going back. And uh, one year ago, I realized that the – I always start with the 1-4 in the 10-year cycle, which we'll look at for 2016 – but one year ago, it looked very bullish. In fact, the last time the pre-election year, it was year ending in five, was 95, when the market was up over 30% with hardly any correction. But the market, what I look to confirm that is the market activity between November and January. And the reason I look at the S&P performance in that range is because that's when big funds like the one I used to be with make all their decisions. Then they implement them 
by the latest late January, and then they don't sell. They don't sell immediately. They hold on for at least six to nine months. So that's a pretty good barometer. And the market was down from November 2014 to January 2015. So I was really a year ago in a pickle. I had the strongest possible cycle setup I had, but the weakest possible confirmation. So I concluded the year would be flat. Because if you're around the markets long enough, you know, one does not necessarily negate the other. They tend to cancel each other out, or you get a mix of both. So uh, the S&P was down less than 1%. I said it would be flat. So now we come to this January, and the 1, 4, and 10-year cycle, as we'll see, points straight down. Uh, on top of that, the market had been declining. And if you look at this first histogram, that is a histogram of the expected return of the Dow Jones from 1885 to present. The expected return is the percentage of times it's been up times the, percent, the uh, percentage change. In other words, if it's uh, been uh, up 50% of the time and the percentage change is 1%, then it's half a percent is the expected return. So as you can see here, in, for all election years, from 1885 to the present, January has been the single weakest month, and here we are. So I concluded from this, and the next cycle, the next cycle is the 1, 4, and the 10-year cycles point down through January and for, through the first half of 2016. So I said, well, gee, the 1, 4, and the 10-year cycle and the histogram both point down. Therefore, we're going to get the second consecutive sell signal on the November to January indicator, which we've now gotten. So now you've got the cycles pointing down and the confirming indicator is confirming for lower prices. So I'm not at all surprised the market is down. I'm just a little uh, taken by the magnitude. And so if people then, well, now if we go to graph three, which I think is the most important one we'll look at, We're that's the addition right of the one, four, and the 10-year cycles. So you see the one-year cycle in blue, the four-year cycle in green, the 10-year cycle in red. And if you if you add them all together, oh, the four-year cycle is in green, the one-year cycle is in blue. And at the bottom, that green line is the summation of all of them. And as you can see, you really don't get uh, a, a low until late June or so. And let me just add that I have a profile of all the years that meet these conditions. I just updated it this morning. In such years, the month of June is the single weakest once you get this, this bearish sell signal. The second weakest month in the entire year is September. And the period, the sell in May period between May and October, that is down almost 100% of the time. It's over 90%. So I think that's what you're looking at here. And okay. if someone asks why, uh, as you know from my prior calls, I've been bearish on the economy. And the major reason is the uh, business activity, the BAI index, which orig was originally started by Ameritrust Bank. I sent you that long graph a while ago. And if you look, the black line is the updated BAI index. It's actually lower than that now. The BAI index was created by Ameritrust. They took every scrap of economic data they could get from 1790 up to uh, the 80s when they stopped producing it, and they strung them all together in, an, uh, in a histogram. 100 on that graph is normal business is normal business growth or business activity increase, which is about 2 to 3 percent annually from 1790 to the present. So currently, we take the FRB index of industrial production, feed it into a regression program, and that is the black line that you see. Mm -hmm. The red line tells us that the 42-month cycle is currently the strongest, and as you can see, it doesn't stop declining until I think that's March, March or April. So you can say it's following the cycle. So I said um, the economy is actually weaker. And if you remember my past visits to your program, we put up the Chapwood Index, which is a much more realistic guide to inflation, which shows it at 8 to 12 percent annually. And the real number for unemployment from John, uh, John Williams at Shadow Stats is up around 20 something, 23 percent or so. So the numbers that you're seeing are not accurate. And if you go down to number five, instead of presenting those again, I've got some new ones here. From the Bureau of Economic Analysis, from 1790 to 1999, real per capita GDP, GDP growth, 1.9% annually. 
2000 to the present, 1.0%. So it's half of what it was for the prior, is that 200 years? Wow. That's why the market is weak. So you might say, well, why did the market hold up all last year? Well, because uh, ample liquidity and a very bearish um, sentiment, I felt, and that's what held it up. And if you look at the number six, the S&P Composite Index with the P.E. ratios in there, the market was going up based on a higher P.E. ratio because the earnings certainly weren't there. Now, the one point I think I can get across that I feel is most important, I feel that level, that P.E. ratio or the price people are willing to pay for common stocks based on their earnings is reflected in the sum of the 1, 4, and the 10-year cycle, which is now pointing down. So if that's pointing down, that means P.E. ratios are going to contract because people are suddenly going to wake up in January and say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. why am I paying so much for stocks? And in fact, the economy has been weaker than I thought. Earnings are weaker than I thought. The cycles tell you when the psychology is going to shift. So therefore, I relate the 1, 4, 10-year cycle to the P.E. ratio. So if the P.E. ratio is going to decline, Larry, and earnings aren't going up, the S&P has one way to go. We got to take a break here, buddy. Stay with us. We'll get back yeah, in a sure. couple of minutes, okay? Sure. Okay, thank you. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, Bill, we're back. And before we yeah. get to the uh, last chart, we've had uh, two requests uh, yeah. for you to go over the one, four, and ten-year cycles that you were looking sure. at here. And uh, if they want to get in touch with you, it's www cycles research, correct? Oh, well, they can just send an email to Bill at cyclesresearch.com. Bill okay. Cycles, C O I C L E S Research, one word, dot com. Okay, great. Let's do chart okay. three again if we could. One, four, and ten. Okay, the most basic cycles, uh, the most basic cycle, and I confirmed this with Richard Mogi, who was head of the Foundation for the Study of Cycles for eight years. I said, Richard, is it my imagination or the cycle you should start with in analyzing any new market is the one year cycle? And he said, yes, I agree. The one year cycle is the calendar year cycle. It's uh, just a seasonal cycle. Now, I'd like to divert, I just did this talk at MIT for the Boston Investors Group in October. And I got up there and I said, now the bad news for people other than Larry and myself and Arch is that how do you get a one-year cycle? You get it from the calendar. How do you derive a calendar from the relative position of the Earth and the Sun? Which implies that other planetary periods are also of value. So that's the one-year cycle. It, the market tends to rally in the spring, correct sometime late in the summer, in September. Most lows are in October. Fourth quarter is very strong, especially December. And the four-year cycle is the presidential cycle. And the theory behind that that I learned in graduate school was that the Federal Reserve wants the incumbent to look good. And so they inject a lot of money into the system in the pre-election year, which is why the market does so well. But my old late friend Ian Notley would point out that this cycle existed prior to the establishment of the Federal Reserve in 1913. It exists in countries that have four-year election cycles, six-year election cycles, eight-year cycles, or no elections whatsoever. In other words, there's a four-year cycle. And the 10-year cycle, I always credit that to Edgar Lawrence Smith at Ameritrust. Some people say it was W.D. Gann. You know, you have to credit all these people. Otherwise, you'll have uh, Gann walking around in your attic at night looking for his hip bone at midnight. <laughs> so the 10-year cycle, years ending in zero have the worst returns. Now, my friend Robin Griffiths in... England, when I said this, he said that's because the Kuznet cycle is a three, three times three point something year Kuznet cycles is 10 years. So the question, therefore, will come from the doubters, where do you get that cycle from? But Robin connects it to that. Years ending in zero have the worst possible returns. Most bull markets begin in years ending in two. Years ending in five have historically had the best record except for the last two. And we're coming up to it, years ending in seven. There's never been a year ending in a seven in the U.S. in which you haven't had some sort of financial crisis or a bad market. That's, That's the 10-year cycle. 1837, 1987. I remember them qu uh, quite well. Yeah. And so... Um, that's uh, that's the one four in a ten year cycle, and with that you can overlay other cycles, and I'll do that very quickly. If you take, I said you get the calendar, and you know actually after this I got an email from a graduate student at the Sloan School of Business at MIT. Thank you for your presentation. I never realized this. I'm going to look into these cycles uh, upon my graduation. So um, the Mars goes through the signs in 1.6 years. And Mars and Uranus make a complete cycle from zero degrees apart back to zero in 1.8 years. Both of those cycles topped in November. So it's unusual. When they get out of phase with the solar cycle, it's a bit difficult. So right now you've got those two cycles pointing down too. And one of the reasons I was bearish, as everybody knows, if you believe in the annual cycle, if you look, there's usually a correction in the first 15 days of December. And semiconductors, conductors, by the way, get hit the hardest. That correction was much steeper than it has been in recent years or historically. Then the recovery from the 15th, from January 15th, excuse me, December 15th through January 7th is one of the strongest times of the year. That was totally negated. And Larry, you'll know as an old trader, if uh, you have very uh, definite signals in one direction and they get overridden, there's an old saying to double up your position in the opposite direction. So that's what I did. And... Uh, you know, I was very bearish in the month of January, but uh, even now I have short-term turning points that were overridden. I have the OPEX week in January. That was overridden to the downside. So it's sort of like, uh, you know, throwing pebbles at a rampaging elephant. All these, all these you know, short-term considerations are being overridden. And I think the market is eventually going to end up at the 2000, 
2007 high, that's around 1550, 1600 on the S&P. Mm -hmm. That's also a 50% retracement of the rally from 2011 and a 38% retracement of the rally from 2009. Mm -hmm. So you have four different levels at 1550, 1600 S&P. But well, I don't think we're going to get there right away. Let's uh, mm -hmm. let's let's repeat those. Uh, we've had several people to ask to repeat. Yeah. Would repeat those. What I'll do uh, on tomorrow's show is I will uh, mark those uh, on the uh, charts and yeah, put them up for the folks to look at. No, that's okay. No, because you you know I've only got you on here for a half hour or so, and I certainly appreciate it. But the the first level was uh, you were talking about the 2007, which was around 1570 in the S and P, I think. 1550 to 1600 is okay. the prior highs of 2000 and 2007. It's also a 50% retracement of the last move up from 2011. It's also 38% of the move up from 2009. Okay. And I just don't see anything really holding the market up. And I think it's there are two fundamentals. I mentioned one that the um, the uh, the economy has actually been much weaker than anticipated. And the second reason is I think people are looking out. You know, let, let, let me talk a bit about 2017. Uh, I have a panic cycle, which, uh, well, next time you have me on, I can put that up since we've got some time to go. But that hits a high. It's increasing now. It is rising from a low, and it peaks in 017. And I think what is going to happen is that uh, we're going to have another panic. But by the rule of alternation, there are two rules of alternation. One is from Marty Armstrong. That is, one crisis tends to be, for example, in the private sector, like in the 30s, and the next one in the public sector. So right now, the biggest bubble on earth is government. And government, the markets are trying to deflate government, and government is struggling to keep itself up there. And the other rule of alternation comes from Charlie Kirkpatrick who said the asset classes that are affected tend to alternate. So last time, real estate and stocks got clobbered. This time, I don't think they'll go down as much because stocks will have already been down somewhat and people have to put their money somewhere and real estate in certain areas is not up uh, too much. But I think private equity, art, uh, will get clobbered. And also, I think rates will probably start to rise. So I think the bond market will sell off. So, uh, Bill. We've got to yeah. we've got to come for a break here for a few minutes, okay. but we, if you'll stay on, uh, we I wanted to ask you a couple things. Particularly, uh, there's a house in the Silicon Valley up for 88 million. That's the highest priced house uh, that's ever been uh, listed there. That's about half as much as one in, in Manhattan. But uh, you're right; some of these real estate things have gone nuts uh, to the upside. Okay, is real is real estate in Abu Dhabi held up relatively well? Uh, it's hard to tell. It's a very illiquid market. It bounces all over the place. They did an enormous. It, it ran up because they couldn't build as fast as you know when the oil boom occurred. Okay, and we, now we got, it is sold off. We got the off. break, buddies. We got the break. Okay. When you come back, we'll we'll pick it up there. Okay. Okay. Hang hang on. Thank you. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. 
Starting January 4th, swim lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Okay, we're back with uh, Bill Meridian with Cycles yes. Research out of Vienna. We were talking about the real estate, uh, real estate in um, uh, Abu Dhabi. Because I know it went nuts there for a while. and Well, it came down very hard, and it's recovered somewhat, but it's a very volatile market. It's a small market. It's a volatile one, and it is not very liquid. What do you, what do you mean? I mean? If you put a house up for sale, it might take a year or two to sell? <laughs> um, no. Well, it, well, it, well, right now, with the oil prices being down, I mean, you have everybody beating a path down there to get money. With oil prices down, I know they're cutting back, so I imagine it's headed south. Yeah, well, that's what it looks like to me, too. Now, Bill, we had one more chart to do, and that was the one on sure. your uh, yeah, the, let the me last just chart. Say, this one I like because it, it shows you all the bear markets, but in terms of P.E. ratios. And way back in 2000, if you, as you know, Larry, if you look at a long-term chart, we tend to have bull markets of 18 to 20 years and bear markets of about 15 years or consolidations. The last one was 66 to 82, 16 years, then 82 to 2018 years. 2000 out to 2015 16 why would the market bottom i think a lot of the excesses are shaking out now starting with this correction and by the time 17 gets here my business activity index cycles turn up and i told the story before but i'm in england and some a young man he said i see your cycle called the 0708 top but why is it flat now fundamentally why would it stay flat i said because they'll elect uh, an administration in the U.S. that is not friendly to free enterprise. So then that left me with the intriguing, you know, I said with the Republicans or conservatives will win the midterm election. And then when the oil price started to break, I said, well, that puts more disposable income in everybody's pockets, which is what happened in 80 to 82. And I said, the only, uh, the one last thing that needs to happen is the last cycle ended with a Ronald Reagan being elected, but there was no Ronald Reagan in sight until, of course, the person who fits him cl more, most closely is Donald Trump. So my guess is uh, he'll probably get elected, and whether he effects, uh, you know, a real change, positive change from the standpoint of free markets or not, people will perceive him as being. Mm -hmm. That and they will, all the money will come out of the woodwork, and the regime uncertainty will dissipate, and uh, the mar the economy will start to grow again, and the market will take off. Um, and you know, by the time the news will still be bad, as it always is, when the market takes off, and it won't be until you get out to 2018 or 19 that you realize why the market bottomed in 60, late 16 or early 17. 
Good point. That's a very good point because the news follows the trend, that's for sure. Now, Bill, if we had a question about uh, the House of Saudi, do you believe it's still going to be in its same form for quite a while or the problems over there? I know you have a lot of friends there. What's your feeling on that? Well, let me just say I met with my friends in London in June and September, and I'm off to meet them in Algeria on the 30th. And we all agree that Iran, when they get this money, which they shouldn't be getting, they're going to build up a very significant – they're going to fix their conventional ground forces, which are very significant because they have a big population. Their nuclear weapons are a non-item. To explode a, a bomb, even if you did it underground, means you have plenty of space. It doesn't have to be uh, – uh, you know, if you put it on top of a missile, it's got to survive G-forces. This is very complicated. They're a very long time – you know, it's a very long time before they'll, they'll have that. The greater th threat is they'll build up their infantry and tank f and air forces, and they'll threaten their neighbors. And that's what we feel is occurring. And um, – the House of Saud is in a very precarious position with a number of problems. Succession is one. And no matter how much money uh, I told everybody down there when I left, I said, if oil prices go way up, don't do what Latin America or every other country does. Listen to the big names on Wall Street who tell you that borrow more money because your commodity, your underlying commodities are going higher. Don't listen to them. Don't get yourself into debt. And of course, uh, Abu Dhabi spent $30 billion bailing Dubai out after their 0708 real estate crash. So I think it looks very shaky for Saudi Arabia. And, um, and it, yeah, as my friend Jim Dunnigan, the military analyst in New York, said, he said, Bell, historically, who are the powers in the Middle East? Egypt and Persia. And so what do you have now? You have Egypt and Iran. Mm -hmm. And by the way, one of my, if I can, one other item, one of my friends who is an economist in New York, former advisor to presidents, he is an advisor to President Sisi of Egypt, and I had lunch with him in New York in October. I said, how was your trip to Egypt? And he said, well, he blames the entire Middle East mess on the American president. He said, pulling out too soon and not leaving a presence here. And he said, I, I love America, but it doesn't love me. And they, uh, the administration did not sell them U.S. weapons, and the president said, we have to buy from Russia. We don't want to, but America won't sell us weapons, if you can imagine that. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I think a change in administration would be uh, very important and uh, might rescue Saudi and Egypt and uh, Turkey has now become a good uh, – cyclically speaking, we're actually at a low if you project cycles from the Ottoman Empire, which indica indicates that Turkey may turn out to be the winner. Mm -hmm. Uh, we, I got a trick question here from someone in the uh, okay. Tiger Den, and that is, does Hillary have a chance of being elected? I haven't really looked. If you want to have me on again, I have not looked at the horoscopes for November. So uh, my gut feeling and instinct is no, because she just doesn't fit this historical cycle, number one. And number two, uh, there is – we used to call it the taxi driver poll. This is back in the days when New York City taxi drivers actually spoke English. And that was a very <laughs> good poll for America, for you know the economy and politics. But just talking to people, I think that the media does not reflect the amount of outrage uh, against the current administration and also against the Republicans. After they got elected on a promise to do away with Obamacare, they didn't do it. And so that's the reason, of course, we all know that Trump appeals to them. But as my Austrian wife and I agree, it's going the way Europe goes. The conservative – the liberal party becomes the socialist and the communist party and the conservative party becomes the liberal – and then the Socialist Party, and that's the direction you're going in. Well, that's good. Bill, we're going to be coming up to another break here. Yeah. How about uh, having you on in a couple of weeks? Would that be okay? Sure. Maybe when you get back from your trip to Algiers, and then we can talk a little bit more. And we have I'll one other question. Uh, we, we talked about oil, the fact that you thought the oil was bottoming, and um, you know, it did go a little bit lower than where you, th where you thought it would go. What would be a trigger mechanism to think that uh, maybe oil has finally made a bottom here, and what do you think could be the upside? That's one of the questions that we have posed for us. Well, yeah, the upside, the upside I had was 40 to $42 a barrel. Okay. And the, uh, the, the trigger is my cycles point up, but my oil data starts in 1983. And as, as I always say, the danger with cycles is how do you know there isn't some longer cycle of thousands of years at work that the last time it oh. occurred, it wiped the oh, pharaoh yeah. out of all his weak positions. And we don't know that. And I think that's what's at work here. 
Wow, that's scary. You know, and it makes sense because of the strength in these uh, cycles that have turned down so quickly in the stock market. You know, the worst days, the worst January we've ever had, you know, the worst, the worst first day we've ever had. I mean, all those things are historical. And coming off that big pattern that you focused on in one of your charts here, uh, this could really be, you know, 15 to 1600 in the S&P might just be a, a minor bounce in, in some instances. So we'll have to watch it very closely, I think. Yes. All right, listen, we want to thank you for having us on. Sure. And it's um, it's Bill at CyclesResearch.com. Yeah, it's BillMeridian.com is the website. BillMeridian.com and Bill at yep. CyclesResearch.com. Hey, listen, thank you That's very it. much, my friend. Sure, and travel Larry. safe, okay? Give your, give your wife my regards. I'll okay. do that, Larry. Bye-bye. You bet. Bye-bye. Okay, we'll be right back to wrap up the show, folks. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, we're back, folks, and I uh, just wanted to remind you that uh, that New York Stock Exchange Index is trading at 91.23, uh, about uh, somewhere between 70 and 80 points. Lower than that, we make a major ABCD pattern on the daily, stretching back to the May 19th high, which was the mer new moon and Mercury retrograde, as pointed out by our good friend Norm Winsky of Cycles Research. Oh, whoops, <laughs> Astro Trends. He, he happens to be a good friend of uh, Bill Meridian also. Uh, and then we came down uh, to the 1.27 uh, on August the 24th. We rallied up into um, uh, early November, November 2nd, and then we've come down hard uh, with an ABCD pin. That doesn't mean it can expand, but we do have several numbers coming in at that level, uh, about 70 points lower. That would be about uh, 80, 90, 100 points lower uh, in the Dow. So we'll see if that's uh, if that's going to be the case. Now, early this morning, the S&P again made another A, B, C, D pattern up there at the uh, 1850 level, and now we're trading at 1837. So uh, you know we're still in a downtrend. If this were if this were the um, the 27th of January, I would certainly be uh, looking to be a buyer because that's when uh, all of these transits uh, they start lightening up uh, tomorrow, but uh, they still stay negative until the 27th so we'll see what happens uh, at that time remember the world global markets are in turmoil uh, the currency oh we got to cover the currency doggone it this one I wanted to show you we talked about this um, several times from our good friend uh, Jim Bartolioni had uh, uh, focused on this chart several weeks ago and I wanted to bring it to your attention this is the yen chart that we've been watching because I think that's going to set up a, a really good trading opportunity when when we finally get down to this level uh, in the yen and if we put this up here and take a look at it on the uh, shorter term basis here uh, over the last uh, over the last days you'll notice that we're going to be coming into some really key uh, support level down around the 113 and change and we're a little below what we're in that one below the 116 level right now so it looks like we're going to get there live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may god bless If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.